or welcome back to Holy Trinity Thought for the Day, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. My name's Mark Smith, I'm on the staff team at Holy Trinity, and I'm leading us through 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5 this week. Let me read our verses for us today, and then I'll pray. According to the Lord's words, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now, remember the context. Paul's only had three weeks, three Sabbaths with the Christians in Thessalonica before he had to leave suddenly. So inevitably, there were things he didn't get to tell them or things they didn't really take in the first time. Important things, things like what happens when Jesus comes back. Reading between the lines, the Thessalonians possibly thought that Jesus was coming back almost straight away. It's perhaps what led to idleness in verses 11 and 12 in chapter 4. And it led to confusion when Christians died. What would happen to them? Would they miss out because they'd passed away before Jesus came back? Well, not at all, Paul says. In fact, verse 16, the dead in Christ will rise first. Don't worry about great Aunt Maud. She won't miss out. In fact, she'll be at the front of the queue. She'll get skipped the line tickets. And only after them, those who have died trusting Jesus, will those of us who are still alive when he comes back join him and then, verse 17. It's an event that none of us will be able to miss, verse 16. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Sometimes when religious oddballs make wacky predictions about Jesus' return and then he doesn't come, They try to save face by saying he did come back, but in secret. And yet this return in verse 16 is not the kind of event you'd miss, is it? I mean, even if you slept through the loud command and the voice of the archangel, I reckon the trumpet call of God would get you awake. You won't miss it. Wherever you are in the world, you'll know about it. And for Christians, for those who know and love this returning Lord, it will be the most wonderful time because of three wonderful reunions. The sharp-eyed amongst us might have noticed an apparent contradiction between verses 14 and 16, because did you notice that the dead in Christ are described both as coming back with Jesus, but also as rising when he returns? And yet I think the solution is actually pretty straightforward. It's their souls which will return and the bodies they've temporarily left behind that will rise. And so the two will be joined together once more, never to be separated again. So that's the first happy reunion, soul with body. The second is in verse 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. We'll be with them, those we've lost again, Paul says. We'll meet again, to quote Dame Vera Lynn. And even better, We'll meet the Lord in the air. Last sentence of verse 17. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It'll be the climax of history because that's really the goal of the whole gospel and the whole Bible. Humans being with God. I think that's what the language of the clouds pictures. It symbolises the presence of God. Think of the Exodus or the events on Mount Sinai or the Transfiguration or the Ascension. It's what we lost in Eden. It's what the tabernacle and temple pictured in a limited way. And it's what we'll enjoy eternally, being with God forever. And of course, we know from the rest of the Bible that being in the clouds, whatever it does picture, is not the final destination. The final destination is a new heavens and a new earth, a new creation where we'll be more alive than we've ever been. No wonder that the application of all this is, verse 18, to encourage each other with these words, which could mean the truths contained in them. Remember, he's only asleep. Don't forget Jesus' death and resurrection. You know you'll see her again. He's with the Lord now, isn't he? But also surely using these God-given words in verses 13 to 17, they were certainly great words to read on the day of my dad's funeral, as I mentioned yesterday. Well, let me pray. Father, thank you that the Lord Jesus is coming back 
and thank you that that will be such a wonderful day for your people. Thank you for those reunions of body and soul, of reunions with those we've lost to know and trust you, and that reunion that we will be with you forever. Help us to keep going, following you until that day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to be saying tomorrow that Christian hope is not just something that transforms our approach to death, but also our approach to everyday life. Do join us. And in the meantime, you might find this song up here encouraging. <laughs>